Coming up on this week in Torrance. Torrance's most popular park is making moves on its large construction project. We'll give you an update. Then we'll tell you which business owner was recognized for his efforts in going green. Plus, staff at a local hospital sharpen their skills to help better treat their tiniest patients. And a new ballroom dancing studio opens up here in Torrance. Find out how you can get moving. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. A tax credit program is offering local businesses a chance to grow here in California. The Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, also known as GoBiz, announced that the California Competes tax credit application period is now open. There are nearly $70 million in credits available. The City of Torrance helps local businesses in the area apply for the program. They are encouraging interested businesses to view a live webinar explaining the application process. The California Competes Tax Credit is part of Governor Jerry Brown's Economic Development Initiative. GoBiz was established in 2012 and serves as California's leader for job growth and economic development efforts. It evaluates the most competitive applications based on various factors. Businesses can use the credits to reduce their state income taxes by the amount awarded. The webinars take place on August 8th and 13th. A highly anticipated fun activity at a popular park is making moves despite some delays. Soil is turning as construction is underway at the future splash pad at Wilson Park. Concrete was poured and staff hopes to have it completed before the weather cools off. The splash pad is replacing the old pond that was not in use. The water playground is expected to be about 3,000 square feet and users will have the chance to control it through a computer system. There is a 4,000 gallon water tank which goes with the pad. Wilson Park is also home to Torrance's weekly farmer's market. A club in Torrance celebrated a milestone. Nearly 80 people came out to celebrate the Kiwanis Club of Torrance for its 30th anniversary. Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the world one child, one community at a time. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce recognized the club for being a member for the past 14 years with Congressman Ted Lieu also in attendance to show his support. People dressed up in 1960s attire. The Kiwanis Club has supported various organizations from Friends of Torrance, Exceptional Athletes, Harbor UCLA Medical Center, and the Salvation Army, just to name a few. There are about 8,000 Kiwanis Clubs in 96 countries, and members have contributed more than $80 million toward the global elimination of iodine deficiency disorders. For more information on becoming a member, go to torrancekiwanis.org. A local business owner was recently recognized for his efforts in going green. Torrance bakery owner Kirk Rossberg was the first Torrance business owner to receive recognition by the Clean Bay Restaurant Certification Program since its relaunch. City officials say Rossberg did a great job in implementing best management practices to his daily operation and was presented with, a official, with an official Clean Bay decal. The Clean Bay Restaurant Program's main mission is to improve water quality by reducing stormwater runoff pollution generated by restaurant activity. The program recognizes restaurants that choose to go above and beyond what is required by law to prevent ocean pollution. All you have to do is complete a checklist and then a city official performs a site visit. The Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission launched the Clean Bay Restaurant Program in 2008. City officials say restaurant owners play an important role in reducing pollution in the ocean by keeping facilities clean, preventing spills, training employees, and properly disposing of waste. Now, if you're a business owner interested in the program, email lcortez at torrentsca.gov. A big-name department store is giving back to promote the arts in local communities. The Torrance Art Museum advocates were chosen as one of three organizations that customers at Macy's can donate to from now through August 15th. The Macy's store at the Delamo Fashion Center chose the group as part of its fundraising efforts known as the Big Give Back Make Good Sense for Your Community Roundup campaign. Macy's customers can round up their purchases and donate their change up to 99 cents to a charity of their choice. The nonprofit organization that raises the most funds at each store will receive a matched donation from Macy's up to $1,000. Now, if you have a passion to sing, you can audition to be part of a music group right here in Torrance.
Los Cancioneros Master Choral will hold auditions for its 2018 to 2019 season, which marks its 70th anniversary. Auditions take place on Monday, August 27th and Tuesday, August 28th. There are four concerts set up for the new year, which all take place at the Torrance Armstrong Theater. The Los Cancioneros Master Choral is a mixed chorus that performs in the South Bay. Its repertoire ranges from classical to modern music. The chorale started in 1949 when a dozen neighbors in the Hollywood Riviera section of Torrance formed a small community chorus as an independent and non-profit organization. To make an appointment for an audition, email auditions at lcmasterchorale.com. Well, want to dance and learn from a renowned professional? We'll tell you how. Plus, staff at a local hospital practice their life-saving skills at their newest NICU facility. We'll be back in just a minute. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met Narnis, my mom, as I'll call her. She started helping me a little bit, like me. I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who have my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. A group of Torrance students are one step closer to accomplishing their career goals. It was a celebration for 30 Torrance High School students as the Torrance Refining Company's Youth Development Program in partnership with the City of Torrance and the Torrance Unified School District came to an end. The students completed a four-week on-the-job internship working in various departments at the City of Torrance or the Torrance Unified School District. The program provides summer employment and educational opportunities for high school students in the City of Torrance. It gives them an opportunity to gain their first job experience, which reinforces the importance of education, community, and a strong work ethic. The program is funded by the Torrance Refining Company and employees serve as volunteer mentors. Students apply through their high school counselor's office and, if selected, are also paid to take part. This is the 28th year the Torrance Refinery has sponsored a teen summer job program. To date, more than $2 million have been granted to fund this program and 1,000 students have participated. The next round of applications will take place next spring. A professional ballroom and Latin dancer is sharing his passion now in Torrance. The Monarch Ballroom officially opened this week. Owner David Estrada moved from Northern California and opened his business in downtown Torrance, he says, because of the close-knit community. He says they offer group classes, le private lessons, exercises, and you can even rent the space out for a private party. A big passion of ours at the Monarch Ballroom is we're trying to bring kids into the studio of the high schools and all the middle schools around here too. We're seeking a lot of the youth, so we're creating these programs to encourage the youth to learn ballroom and Latin dancing. Estrada says aside from offering quality dance instruction, his goal is to inspire every student that walks through his doors and take them on an adventure in the world of dance, movement, health, art, and creativity. They plan to have a grand opening party on August 26, offering great deals for interested customers like $1 classes. For more information, head to themonarchballroom.com. They're located at 1323 El Prado Avenue. A young man who we've been following since his arrival from Cameroon, Africa in 2015, reaches another milestone. You might remember his name, Jaspa Awoma. He received burn and reconstructive care treatments at Torrance Memorial Medical Center, and he recently graduated from Arena Alternative Virtual High School in El Segundo, where he completed a four-year high school curriculum in just two years. Now his plans are to continue his education at El Camino College next fall, thanks to the partnership between Torrance Memorial Medical Center, Children's Burn Foundation, and Plant a Seed. During Awoma's time here in the U.S., he has undergone 15 surgeries. The Torrance Roseboat Association hosted their third annual Luau fundraising event that brought fans and donors together for a fun night out. Our reporter Roxana Paul tells us more. 
For one day, Locas felt the Aloha spirit here in Torrance. Over 100 people supported the fundraiser. The theme for the 2019 Rose Float is the power of the music and the design of the float was created by Jason Kim, a high school student. Margaret Estelle has been volunteering as a decorator for the past 35 years. I love working with the people and I like being part of the float, being part of the parade. The event was hosted at the Ken Miller Recreation Center. Place, photo booth, dinner and entertainment were provided for the participants. This year's silent action comes with an impressive amount of gift baskets. The only thing that you need is to have your ticket, to choose the basket that you would like to win. Then you place this ticket in the bag and hopefully by the end of the program you'll find out that you are one of the winners. Mayor Patrick Fury came out with his wife and other friends from the community to support the fundraising. That it is one of the big volunteer events of the year where people come and volunteer their time and just to uh, cut flowers or glue flowers on and then the pride that we have on New Year's Day, the seeing the parade and our float coming down Colorado Boulevard is really cool. The president of the Torrance Rose Float Association got emotional as she was talking about the event. When they do the judging on our float, you know, all of us are sitting up there trying to fight back the tears because we're so proud of what we've done. Torrance has been keeping this tradition for over 60 years and has received 13 times the first prize. It's feeling good. You're proud of the city. You're proud of those who, put to, who work so hard to put it together. And we're celebrating Torrance. For City Cable, I'm Roxana Powell. Thanks, Roxana. If you would like more information or would like to sponsor an event, head to torrencerosefloat.org. And speaking of the Torch Rose Float Association, the 2019 Rose Float is getting more beautiful by the day. With just five months until the new year, the float continues to make progress. The musical theme float now has colors on the drum and mouth of the trumpet. The 2019 Torch Rose Float captures the theme, Melody of Life, and will have musical symbols with a live band playing as it rolls down Colorado Boulevard. The association will soon select a band to debut cover hits during the parade. A classic Shakespeare performance was brought to life for South Bay locals at Wilson Park. Three ragged monks that sour themselves to death. Shakespeare by the Sea returns and brought out many with their lawn chairs, picnics and blankets. The latest performance of A Winter's Tale tells the story of jealousy written by William Shakespeare. It's the story of Leontes, a king who banishes his family wrongfully and is taught the meaning of forgiveness through a wise, loyal woman. The director of the show says performing timeless stories is a great opportunity to express shared humanity. The reason we wanted to do the show is because I was entranced by this idea of finding things that are lost. I think we can all relate to thinking something is lost forever and realizing that you get another chance. Um, and I find it very heartwarming and very moving in its profound kind of comment about the human experience. We enjoy being at the park and the plays and all of the actors and just the, uh, the community getting together and enjoying a picnic. The group hosts free performances across Los Angeles County and in parts of Orange and Ventura counties. It is the only admission free theatrical event that serves these regions. For other performances, head to ShakespeareByTheSea.com. The Torrance Art Museum is looking to give a few South Bay artists a chance to show off their work. The museum is accepting applications for its South Bay Focus 2.0 program. Four artists will be selected to have their work displayed at the main gallery. Artists from any South Bay zip code, whether they live or work there, can apply by submitting 10 images of their work, an artist statement about their work, and an exhibition resume. The Torrance Art Museum is a premier visual art space where you can view contemporary art in the South Bay. Material should be saved on a thumb drive, CD, or hard copy on paper and dropped off at the Torrance Art Museum. They're located at 3320 Civic Center Drive. The deadline is August 31st.
Honda is making sure it's doing what it can to reduce its carbon footprint. The car company, which has its North American headquarters in Torrance, announced its plans to introduce a new Honda Smart Charge beta program that allows electric vehicle customers to reduce the environmental footprint of charging their car while earning monetary rewards. Honda is the first one to introduce this type of program and will roll it out to Honda Fit EV customers. The Honda Smart Charge allows its customers to charge when electricity demand is low and when the availability of renewable energy is high. It also has the ability to compute the best time to charge a vehicle from the electric grid, dynamically taking into account the driver's daily schedule, the amount of renewable energy being generated, and the CO2 emission. This is part of Honda's plan to make two-thirds of its global automobile sales from electrified cars by 2030. If you're a Fit EV owner, you can download the free app. To learn more, go to smartcharge.honda.com. Whether you're paying for a prescription or buying a Slurpee, purchasing just got a little more convenient. Beginning this fall, you'll be able to use Apple Pay at CVS and 7-Eleven retailers nationwide. Apple Pay now has more than 4,900 banking partners in 24 global markets. CVS says about 7,800 standalone pharmacies will start accepting it. Apple Pay had more than 1 billion transactions during the company's third quarter. A new report ranked California schools as some of the best and the safest. A study by the personal finance website WalletHub compared public school systems across the U.S. measuring quality and safety, including student-to-teacher ratio and standardized test scores. California ranked 38th in quality and 21st in safety. Overall, the state was ranked 37th. Officials also say the quality of the education many times just comes down to the level of funding. The top schools were in the Northeast. Other factors looked into were cyberbullying, bullying, class size, and instructor credentials. Fifteen South Bay eighth graders got a first-hand look at college life. South Bay Workforce Investment Board's Teen Center youth participated in a day in the life of a college student with a tour at California State University Dominguez Hills. Students started their experience at the Hawthorne Teen Center and then headed to the university. Torrance Unified School students participated in the event where they attended an admission workshop, financial aid information session, campus tour, and even an overnight stay. The ongoing event is part of the South Bay Promise, a program that aims to help area students with college preparation. The SBWIB operates four one-stop business and career centers within its South Bay service area, including one right here in Torrance. You may want to check your refrigerator for some greens that could make you ill. The United States Department of Agriculture issued an alert on beef, pork, and poultry salads and wraps produced by Kyoto Foods of Indiana due to concerns of cyclospora contamination. This is a feces-borne parasite in salads and wrap products. The items are sold at Trader Joe's and Walgreens. The illness causes diarrhea and major changes to bowel movements. Other symptoms are weight loss, stomach cramps, and fatigue. You can find a full list of the recalled items on USDA.gov. Staff working at Torrance Memorial Medical Center's neonatal intensive care unit practiced their emergency response skills. Doctors, nurses, and volunteers conducted a test run of intensive care practices for their tiniest patients. This was in preparation of their move to the fourth floor in the newly renovated Hunts Tower. Using dolls, staff carried out emergency situations to test workflow equipment and care procedures in the new unit. They performed resuscitation and worked to stabilize their test patients. The new NICU will have 24 private rooms, special rooms for higher acuity patients, and each room will be outfitted to have a range of newborn intensive care accommodations and large enough to comfortably fit a newborn family. Other amenities include more privacy, reclining seats, and for twins, there will be adjoining rooms with sliding glass doors. The NICU offers medical care for newborns less than 32 weeks old, so they don't have to be transported to a distant regional medical center for care. August 23rd is the official move in date into the new tower.
A drug that helps to control pain from sickle cell disease is now available for the first time to the men and women who serve our country. Thanks to a special partnership, Torrance-based company Emmaus Life Sciences teamed up with DMS Pharmaceutical Group, allowing the drug Indari to be available to patients at the military-based treatment facilities, hospitals, and medical clinics, which includes 3 million active military personnel. Company officials say the new partnership is an exciting step forward for patients who need it. Indari is the first FDA-approved treatment for sickle cell disease in nearly 20 years. The inherited blood disorder causes severe pain. Still ahead, upcoming events you won't want to miss. We'll be back in just a minute. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back, everybody. Here are some upcoming events. The Madrona Marsh Preserve and Nature Center is hosting a sustainable landscape class hosted by the Water Replenishment District of Southern California. It'll take place on Saturday, August 11th at 9 a.m. until noon. The event is free and open to the public. Also on August 11th, enjoy a free concert at the Lidamo Fashion Center from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at their new Village Park Lawn. The event is part of the Summer Music Series. Then on Sunday, August 12th, you can bring your picnic baskets and blankets and enjoy another music performance by the Susie Hansen Latin Band from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Gazebo at Wilson Park. Now let's take a look at what's happening on the Sports Desk. AJ, what do you have for us? Hey guys, here's what you'll see on this week's edition of the Sports Desk. Torrance natives were racing through the streets at the 57th Annual Grand Prix. And the kids are away at summer camps, and we'll check in with a football camp at El Camino College and a baseball camp at the Torrance Batting Cages. Plus, we'll have a story about adult roller hockey that you just have to see. We'll have all these stories and so much more. Remember to watch the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. right here on Torrance City Cable. Jen and Ben, back to you. Thanks so much, AJ. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.